Thanks. I appreciate it. It's good to be with you, Earl, and I'm um, looking forward to the tour. Uh, you know, the first thing that uh, uh, we did after the President uh, asked me to oversee this uh, almost $800 billion program was go out and decide to find uh, who would — who was the Inspector General that uh, had the greatest amount of credibility — and I mean this literally, not figuratively uh, — with our colleagues uh, in the House and the Senate. And that was a real — a real early and easy decision to make, and it was Earl Devaney. We asked Earl to head this up, and uh, — and I've been proud to be associated with uh, — w- with the good work he's been doing and the Board has been doing since then. When we passed the law uh, — uh, the Recovery Act and the law, uh, we did it in the midst of the worst recession since the Great Depression. And we had several clear goals. The first was to save and create jobs for today. The second was to lay a foundation for long-term prosperity tomorrow and to do it right, to do it well, and to make sure that every dollar — every dollar was accounted for and every official who received any dollar and non-official was held accountable for what they did with that money. To cut out any and all cases of waste and fraud so that the tax dollars uh, would go exactly where the tax dollars were intended to go. Look, folks, this is a difficult thing, as Earl knows, to get this passed. In the midst of a great recession, to ask the taxpayers to come up with another $787 billion in order to begin to revive the economy, uh, we felt was required a most unusual effort on the part of the federal government, an accountability process that, quite frankly, I think — I may be mistaken, Earl, but I don't think has ever been done before like this. And we hope, by the way — I keep telling the Cabinet members, as I call Cabinet meetings uh, — uh, is that we hope this becomes a template for the future in how — how to manage government spending. The public placed their trust in us, and uh, we're going to repay that trust with a responsible stewardship uh, uh, that has to do with this historic investment. After more than a year of implementing the Recovery Act, as I said, nearly uh, $800 billion, I can say proudly not only are we creating jobs across the country, not only are we spurring growth in new and emerging industries, but we're doing it responsibly, accountably, and with real and unprecedented level of transparency — a level of transparency that's never been seen in this town before, I would argue, and I would argue is not seen in most governments. And much of the credit goes to the outstanding leadership of you, Earl, and the Board of Inspectors General and the men and women of the Recovery uh, Advisory Transparency Board who have tirelessly working to make sure every day we get this right. And as you guys uh, know the saying, so far the dog hasn't barked. Well, so far the dog hasn't barked. Um, remember all the stories about what was going to happen when you try to institute a program this big, this large, this diverse within a two-year period in the middle of a recession. And we're going to continue to make sure the dog doesn't bark. You guys know that when the President gave me the responsibility of uh, uh, dealing with and implementing this Recovery Act, he called me Sheriff Joe. Well, uh, I still got my badge on. I know I got criticized in the front end of this for being too fastidious about uh, how the money went out to make sure we had the had the, uh, um, the mechanisms in place. And I know you got criticized for being so insistent upon uh, measures being in place to hold everybody accountable. But, you know, uh, we're, we were here to send a, a very clear and unambiguous message that — and one that comes straight uh, from the Oval Office — that not reporting is not acceptable. The memorandum Earl is referring to earlier is uh, a memorandum that uh, the President uh, signed off on and that we're announcing today that uh, calls for very tough action for any recipient who doesn't report. We still need to know where every dollar went and to — and every recipient that got a dollar. And that's why, going into the current recipient reporting period — we're required to report every quarter here, which began on April the 1st — the President issued a memorandum directing all the agencies of the federal government — not some — all the agencies of the federal government to be aggressive to be aggressive in going after people who do not report 
what they've done with the money they have received. This memorandum strongly reinforces our emphasis on accountability and it requires agencies to intensify their efforts wherever authorized and appropriate by law to do it to one, terminate awards for those who don't report, reclaim misused funds if that occurs, pursue suspension and disbarment of non-reporting grant recipients and contractors, and finally, to make sure we're following up on every report submitted and every dollar allocated. These are public funds, taxpayers' funds, and the memorandum directs the agencies to intensify its efforts to report as soon as possible so this outfit can be on top of it and follow exactly where the money went. And any non-compliant recipients uh, so that uh, we can address the issue. So the moment they fail to comply is the moment that is made public because we want to follow up on every single dollar. As you know, know Earl, I've traveled across this country as vice president visiting, I think now, on Holman, I think it's over 65 cities and towns in America, mostly with the Recovery Act, some of having to do with the middle class task force, but usually both. And I meet folks in all walks of life, in all parts of the country, who because of the Recovery Act are working again, collecting a paycheck for the first time in months, making mortgage payments and providing for their families. Now, as my grandpa used to say, and you've heard me say this a bunch, the Recovery Act wasn't the horse designed to carry the whole sleigh. There were a lot of other parts of our economic policy, but this was to get people beginning to get back to work, to save jobs, and begin to invest in a future economic growth we need. And these people are back to work now. Their kids have a sense for the first time in a long time that things are going to be okay. Mom and dad have their jobs back and everything's going to be fine. We got a long way to go in terms of the unemployment rate, but the act is working, putting people back to work. I see it everywhere I go. The Recovery Act is working and it's working well. It's giving American middle class families a fighting chance, a fighting chance again, something they haven't had for a while. And I also see a growing recognition of the benefits of the Recovery Act both in the public at large and with the press, quite frankly. It's not just jobs saved or jobs gained. It's a realization that we're investing in a new economy, an economy focusing on the future, focusing on education, focusing on energy, focusing on public health. Because without focusing on these three elements of our economy, there is no possibility no possibility America can lead the world in the 21st century as the greatest economic power. I'd ask the rhetorical question, does anybody think we can build the 21st century in American leadership based upon the industrial base we had in the 20th century, based upon the energy policy we had in the last quarter of the 20th century, based on the education policy we've had? So this is about the future as well as about the present. And I see one, one more thing, and that is the public and the press have begun to recognize the great work you've done and the great work the board has done in making sure that the dog, as I said before, has embarked. It was predicted, as I remind everyone, that a program this big, no program this big, no program this comprehensive, no program that had to be moved out this quickly could possibly be done without significant fraud and abuse. If you go back and look at the press reports and reports of our critics, and I'm not critic, I mean, it was a legitimate thing for them to be concerned about, that there was no possibility of this happening without wasting tens of millions and arguably billions of dollars. Well, because everyone knows how seriously we're taking this and because of your presence, uh, we've had thus far proved them wrong. There's an old expression, an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. Between us and the President and a, a lot of other people, we've made it real clear. I'm on the phone every single week with somewhere between five and seven governors and seven and ten or twelve county executives and mayors. And I've made it clear to them from the beginning. Tell us what you need, how to help you report, how to help you get this done, but, 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 you're, you are accountable. And I publicly, personally, will hold you accountable and say so to the press. I must say I've gotten extraordinary 
cooperation. We've gotten extraordinary cooperation from the governors and the elected officials around the country. And let me give you a few statistics and then I'll end. Of this, there's been 65,000 prime recipients of money. Now, those prime recipients may have more than one contract. They may have awarded three, five, two, seven, one contracts. So there's a lot more contracts, individual allocations of dollars to individual contractors out there than the 65,000 number. But of the 65,000 recipients required to report every quarter and the many multiple contractors that fall within that gambit, thus far, there have been 1,700 complaints referred to inspectors general, the attorney general of the United States, and or your office, 1,700. Of those 1,700 that have been looked at, there are 40 to 50, I think I'm right about that, I say, no more than 50, I believe, at this point, a, a little more. Well, so, there's somewhere, you can give me a hint, is it higher? About 150. Uh, about 150 now? 150 of those 1,700 have been referred for additional, additional looks to see whether anything has gone wrong. Well, let me tell you, the fact of the matter is, if you have 150 out of over 65,000, that's a pretty good track record. And guess what? We're going to track down every one of those. And if there's been a violation of the law, if there's been fraud or abuse, we're going to hold that recipient accountable under the law. And those numbers, I acknowledge, will change every month. We, this act is not finished. We have a significant way to go. But thus far, I think you've done a remarkable job. As I said, there's an old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. No one who receives this money is in any doubt of the fact how seriously we take their requirement to husband it, account for it, and do what they said they were going to do with it. Our view is that and let me speak very personally here, and I know it's your view as well because we meet frequently in my office. The ability for this program to work, the willingness of the public to continue to support it, is more directly tied to the transparency and accountability of every dollar than anything else. We have to prove and will continue to prove the critics wrong that we can administer a program that, in fact, can be administered honestly, fairly, and accountably. And so I am absolutely convinced without public accountability and transparency, there will be no public support. Or say it another way, the reason why public support is growing is not just they've seen the benefit of the programs, but because they become increasingly convinced that we are accountable, transparent, and waste, fraud, and abuse is held at an extreme minimum, and where we find it, we will pursue it. And so uh, it's sometimes, uh, uh, it's something that, uh, quite frankly, Earl, wouldn't be possible uh, without the work of each and every one of you here, the work for you, as well as the mere knowledge they know how serious you take it. So uh, keep up the great work. This is an incredibly important task. I can speak for the President of the United States of America without fear of contradiction when I say, we're proud of what you've done and what you're going to continue to do. And this is all about a single imperative, getting America back on its feet. But as I said, it is my ulterior motive here, and I'll just state it bluntly, not only to make sure this act is implemented in a way that is fully accountable and transparent and it works, but to lay down a new template as to how any major government spending program should take place. When the President took office, he and I argued that we wanted to change the way in which government worked and how it was accountable. I view this as a first and very critical step toward that end. So I thank you all for being here, and uh, you have the full support of the President, uh, Earl, and uh, I'm anxious to meet some of your colleagues. Thank you, Thanks. Sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, folks. Appreciate it.